Chafing Armor Podcast, episode 65. It's roundup time. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and irascible dungeon master, Michael Corley. We are enjoying this lovely July 22nd day. And it is so appropriate that the Lion King reimagining movie has just come out when we've got an episode about animals. Did everyone like that movie? It was cool. I liked the, the artistic liberties they took in making uh, a tender love scene between Timon and Pumbaa. Oof. I was just glad they got Repre- James Representation. Earl. Exactly. <laughs> But I don't know why they had James Earl Jones uh, play the part of Scar. That was such an odd choice. Uh, Speaking of animals, in our last adventure, all of our adventurers, save one, had been transformed into animals. So very quickly, everyone, tell us uh, both who you are playing and, if relevant, uh, who you've been transformed to. Lee, who are you playing today? G'day, everybody. Uh, My name is... Lee and I am playing Usukai, the shifter from the Eldine Reaches, who is currently permanently and forcibly in his shifted state. Uh, he did not turn into an animal, but he does lead a not so merry band of creatures in his stead. And one of those creatures is Izzy. Izzy, tell us who you are playing. Yes, I'm Izzy, a creature, and I play the orc Morezi. Um. Uh, it's not relevant that I turned into a, uh, dire boar, so I won't talk about it. <laughs> we don't talk about that. It's the first rule of dire boar, you don't talk about dire boar. <laughs> we don't talk about Fridays. <laughs> Is Dare, Dare, tell everyone who you are playing. Greetings, everyone. I am Dare, and I am currently playing a blue crab with a, a steel-like claw that used to be... Tix Birchmanson, a gnome cleric. Just so. And also, last but certainly not least, the uh, resplendent in either form, uh, James. James, who are you playing? Hey, y'all. Uh, I am playing a the mind of Pentanchalus, a spell scale sorcerer stuck in the body of a lovely kingfisher bird. Indeed. Uh, when we last left off, all our characters had been, as mentioned, transformed into various animals uh, because of his innate shifter ability, apparently. Osokai was unaffected, though forced to stay in his shifter state, something that his body is starting to feel a little bit of a strain. Uh, typically, Osokai, how long do you stay in a shifter state? Typically, it lasts for about... It lasts for about... So, five rounds, which is about 30 seconds. Okay. So imagine if you were to flex your muscle, that's not a problem. Uh, But imagine flexing your muscle for a half hour. Uh, It's starting to take its toll in that your body is constantly trying to shift under the driving rain that is falling on all of you that caused this transformation. There are currently no minuses, but you don't know how much longer you can take this before it starts to affect you. Even before that can be a problem, uh, there is the small matter of two mummies that had came erupting out of the ground while you were making your way westward on the Penta Plains towards the source of this madness. You had captured the creature who was claiming to be Zuana, and these creatures come out who are mummies. Imagine velociraptors, but more humanoid. And mummies. That's what's attacking you right now. And I need everyone to roll for initiative. Are you my mummy? Uh, Penson got a nine, although I'm pretty far away, so... Yes, you are returning, though you will be back uh, very soon. Uh, You move very, very quickly in your birdie birdie farm. Tix got a lowly two. Two for Tix. I got an... I got a super rad and awesome three. Wow. Uh, You guys uh, just usually kill your rolls, and this is fascinating. Uh, And uh, finally, Osokai. Yeah, that's a a five for Osokai. Wow. Wow. Two, three, four, and five now? (laughs) Yes. One and nine. Nine, five, five, three, and two. Uh, By the way, the mummy's got a 20 and a 19. So... uh, (laughs) Uh, what I what I will say is because of the warning that Morezzi shouted slash squealed to all of you, 
you, they did not actually get a surprise attack, but they do still get to attack first because you kind of weren't expecting mummies to come right out of the ground underneath you. Uh, and they actually attack first. One of them is actually, oh, by the way, just a, a real quick thing. When you all transformed, you all completely healed from your previous battles from before, uh, when you all had all taken various wounds and such. When you turned into this new shape, uh, you all reset to zero. So just FYI. Mummy number one is going after the largest creature, which is the squealing boar, and gets a 10. That That's is not dumb. going to do it. Yes, that is dumb. Yeah, uh, is a dumb mummy. And dumb. the other mummy sees this a lowly crab uh, uh, scrabbling on the ground and goes for it. What? What is happening? Uh, it gets it gets another ten. Um, okay, I guess they they used up their mojo rolling their initiative. Is that how that works? Um, so, Pinson, I am going to correctly say that uh, you uh, are going to spend this round returning as you're flying back. But if you right. do uh, have anything you want to shout or anything like that, you certainly can do so at this moment. Look out, it's mummies. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, okay. And that will actually bring it to Osokai. Wait, who's, who got the nine then? Uh, he did. Pinson did, but he that was, to... but I'm, I'm, I'm coming back from scouting ahead. Oh, so I'm okay. really not able to do anything. Uh, okay. Um, well, I guess, I will forcibly set Sudowana, lay Sudowana down on the ground. Um, okay. So that, you know, there's a minor chance of her getting up and running away. Um, just to make things difficult for her. Still not done mm -hmm. with her just yet. And I will hit the closest one, I guess. Okay. Uh, so the two mummies are coming out. So one of them is uh, your classic mummy, uh, you know, Humanoid Velociraptor, classic mummy. Uh, and the other one is much more skeletal. Uh, there are actual gaping holes in it. You can see bones beneath it. And its its jaw is like slightly hanging loose as it is opening its mouth and hissing towards you. Uh, which one would you like to attack? Uh, since it is more skeletal, would it be classed as a skeleton uh, I would al I would allow that, yes. So it would be impervious to blades, more damage to blunt. Very likely. Um, well, thankfully I have both. L let's let's take out the the fleshy one first. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. Okay, that's a twenty-two modified. That that will definitely hit. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, all of my weapons are low damage. So that's a. That's four damage. Four damage. As you slash into its chest, the several of the uh, bandages snap, 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 and you see very taut, uh, leathery scales underneath that are, are dry, uh, except that they're currently being soaked by rain. Uh, as you can imagine, it is not being affected by the rain for whether it's undead or not, you do not know. Yep. And that will actually bring it to... Uh, Pseudoana, and she is going to uh, spin the round standing up, uh, and she is kind of scooting her. I, I say that she's kind of got herself in sort of like a kneeling position. Wait, 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 wait. Did I ever say that I got up from her? Well, well we were oh, moving, no, this is, so... Yeah, this has been a while yeah. since then. Oh, I, I missed that. Y'all been, been making your way further and further west. Um yes. And uh, she, unfortunately for her, rolls a five. So even though she has gotten herself up uh, from a prone position, she has been unable to free herself from your knots around the uh, whip. And of course, uh, as you would imagine, the second you let go of the whip as you were leading her, you can no longer understand what the other characters are saying. Uh, Osukai. And that will bring it to Moresi. Um, I would like to try to gore the... Uh... The mummy that has already been attacked. Okay, the fleshier one. That's a big sexy two. Ooh, unfortunately not. It, you, you literally slip in the mud. Everything is just soaked because uh, it's been raining for quite some time in this area. And as you're trying to... Brum, 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 brum. Wait, a seven won't hit either. I forgot to add my modifier. 
Uh, unfortunately, no. Their AC is higher than that. They are just, they're tough, leathery hide. That's stupid and also dumb. I just imagine Izzy doing that. Uh, has everyone seen the video of the deer uh, through a kid's playhouse set to no. uh, In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins? I, I don't <laughs> think I have. No, no, but that sounds great. I will look I'll, that up. I'll, I'll put it in the Discord, but yeah, I just imagine that's what Izzy is doing right now. Do, 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 do. I'm currently uh, Googling deer running through playset. And speaking of crabs, who is, uh, even though you hate the transformation, you're enjoying this constant rain, is Tix. Uh, Tix, uh, what would you like to do? Tix is going to snap at the one that tried to hit me, because I'm okay. a bit crabby at the moment. <laughs> Don't forget your plus four. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. That would be a 19. That will hit. Which is, it's a natural 19, not including the plus four. And so that counts as a critical. Mm -hmm. And so that is triple damage. And so that is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 points of damage plus two necrotic. Are they immune to necrotic? Uh, They actually are. And I I appreciate you being uh, honest about that. But still, 15 is a respectable amount of damage. It's far more than most average characters have total tell me how little <laughs> uh, tell me what it looks like when you and by the way as uh lee correctly pointed out is normally a skeleton would have resistance against piercing damage but yours with this claw it's almost like a combination of piercing and crushing damage because well, you're it's, coming uh, in are they resistant to slash damage uh no okay it's the axe counts as slashing damage and ah. so my claw would uh, snap towards its vulnerable uh, lower half, its pelvis region, and <laughs> trying to snap its former uh, valuable uh, mummy jewels right <laughs> off of its uh, yeah. bandaged body. Lizard snap, mess. snap, snap, snap. <laughs> and you all see this... this crab just doing that sidewalk so so quick and just partially actually going up the side of the mummy's leg and just a series of snap 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 and you actually hear the crack of bones as part of its pelvis actually disintegrates right in the the hut nuts Uh, right in the hut nuts hashtag hut nuts everyone hut Hut nuts nuts forever uh and it it does a tremendous amount of damage to this uh skeletal mummy and that will actually bring it back up to the fleshy mummy, who is now attacking you, Osukai, since you're the one who successfully hit. And it distends open its jaw, and it is trying to slam into you and then bite you. It's actually a two-part attack. The first one, it actually gets a 19. That will hit. Okay, uh, so that is its slam. Uh, and it does... Uh, by the way, when you were forced to shift, you actually healed uh, all of your damage before. Uh, it actually does nine points of damage with the slam. That was a, It did maximum damage to you. Okay. Uh, and now it is trying to bite your shoulder. And that is a natural 20. Oh, no. Yeah, that's this not is good. fun. What is it with things trying to bite Osakai in half? I don't know. I don't know. So it uh, that's another nine points of damage. So that you've just taken in, in the space of a second, 18 points of damage. Uh, so it, 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 well, and remember, these things are basically velociraptors. And it just suddenly, do, 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 bam, slams into you, opens its giant mouth and clamps onto your shoulder. <laughs> Uh, it is a lot of damage, and it really hurts. And also, I need you to make a fortitude save. Mm. Oh, well, I can do that. Wow. I say that. <laughs> Don't jinx yourself, boy. That's a 19. Oof. 19, okay. And you feel something necrotic, like, starting to go into your system, and perhaps it's your constant shift that you've got going on at the moment, but you're just like, Arr! and you just... You fight it off. You literally just fight off the effects. Uh, you think that you did not want those effects, uh, and you now have a gaping wound on your left shoulder. Uh, I might be that... dead inside in reality, guys, but my character will not be. 
There you go. Uh, uh, now, now you let should all be a of the Gen all Z of the teenager. dead. Yes, all the dead inside uh, jokes uh, begin. And the skeletal one, it, unsurprisingly, is trying to stomp, stomp on this blue crab that attacked it, and he rolls a two. So uh, he That's he turns cool. and he actually he is actually trying to step on you, and his left leg just kind of like <laughs> like collapses in on itself, and he partially stumbles to the ground because he his leg is no longer there. That's the way I like it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. And that will actually bring it to Penton. You have been whoosh, swooming back in, and you see what is happening before you. What would you like to do? Um. Well, since the thing's distracted, I'll swoop in with a with a talon attack from behind on the fleshy mummy. All right. Um. There's no advantage in in three five is there i've been playing 5e so much that i keep i get confused uh if it's focused on As something else and you come in from the back it should be flanked and thus flat-footed so it will lose its dex bonus uh, if it has one i huh. i will allow that okay let's see what we got here that's a 21 to hit that will definitely hit okay we're and gonna charge this one up too um with the uh the power of bahamut i will also allow a plus two to your damage uh because you are effectively dive bombing uh something you would not normally be able to do in normal combat but you are you know coming in and and the sheer force of this attack uh, would give you a plus two to damage gravity Ooh. assisted yes exactly gravity assisted oh four You've uh, plus our pox cars, not bad. Sixteen points of damage. Sixteen points of damage, and I apologize. Were you attacking the flesh one or the skill? The fleshy one? one, yes, the fleshy one. So that is twenty points of damage that it has taken, and it, it, you uh, will tell me, like, where did you attack it? Oh, I'm um, a dive bomb. I basically just rake a line across its back. Okay, and, uh, taking and chunks of taking chunks of wrap with me. Mm-hmm. And perhaps you have some uh, some of your arcane knowledge is that some of the magic of a mummy is held up in its wrappings and that it, it bing, 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 uh, breaking these uh, slightly weakens it somewhat. And it, it does not care for that at all. And it's swiping at you, but it cannot reach you because you have come in and, and gone out too quickly uh, that even it, it can't even get an attack of opportunity against you because you were going so fast. Uh, and that will actually bring it to you, Osokai, who has just suffered a, a rather uh, unpleasant hit. Um, I'm going to kick Sudawana. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Okay, well, uh, if she gets up, she's gone. Mm-hmm. So we need um, to deal with that too. So I will allow that because she's she, knocking her back you, over. You, basically. Did, you never actually said you moved away from her, uh, no. so you would be able to kick her without incurring an attack of opportunity from the flesh dude. Though he is still like literally right on top of you. Um. So I'll give her a swift kick. Okay. That's wow. Okay, that's nineteen. Nineteen will hit. That's two. Uh, two points of damage. <laughs> Uh, though she has, by the way, already taken 16 points of damage. So that's 18. That's not an insignificant amount of damage. And she, uh, stumbles as she is trying to make her way away. Uh, and in fact, it is her turn. She is going to try to run from you. And that actually will give her an attack of opportunity. I'm sorry, give you an attack of opportunity against her. Um, so she's turned away from me and he's trying to run away, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to grab the handle of the whip if I can. Okay. And just yank uh, it back? Normally, I, I, an attack of opportunity is just a straight attack, but I think because of the special circumstances here, I will allow that. Okay. Oh, that's a natural Plus 20. It... <laughs> so Why do I get them in the, most indescri- in, in the most unnecessary <laughs> things now? Thanks, Dice. I appreciate that. So tell me what it would have shifted Osokai, who's super strong, but, but really feeling the pain of his constant shift, uh, who has just had enough and just got his shoulder partially ripped out by a mummy, uh, and then this captive tries to run away from him. What does it look like when you grab a hold of her? Ozu guy's kind of had enough, so his arm's just going to just dart out and grab the handle and just yank back. Um, probably way harder than necessary, um, but, you know, think, uh, let's see, think Scorpion from... Mortal Kombat. Get over here! Yeah, so I'm just going to yank her back and just get over here. Sit down, don't move. 
Um, and hope, thanks to my natural 20, that I've kind of pulled her a little bit too far and she goes past me and hits the fleshy lizard dude, knocking him back a bit, but that's up to the DM. Um, I will uh, go ahead and just make a straight dexterity roll for me. Okay. Dex is not too bad. Thanks again. That's another 20. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, then, 27. <laughs> uh, just roll roll a uh, 1d6 and add your strength. Okay. D6. That's a 6 plus strength. So that's 10. 10 points of damage. Um, so you just, you know, destroyed the flesh mummy and you just killed uh, Sudawana. So, tell me what that looks like when that happens. <laughs> um, it was an accident, I swear. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so the pain racking through Oskai's body is not insignificant. He's not really designed to shift for this long. Um, mm -hmm. So his muscles will be tw twitching and, and flexing and adding to his already notorious irritability. Um, so yanking back the diminutive Sudowana, uh, most likely snaps her spine, um, and she becomes a makeshift flail, slinging back and smacking dead weight into this not, not too pleased fleshy, uh, lizard mummy who... Suffering already from his in a not inconsiderable wounds, um, mm -hmm. does severe damage internally, destroying whatever internal arcane eldritch wizardry keeping it together, and they gotcha. both crumble into a mashed heap of pseudoana and lizard man. I'm going to assume that since pseudoana is now dead, the whatever effect. Her polyjuice potion had no longer is in effect. That was the best mental image I've ever had in my entire life. Thank you, Lee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and that's why I like y'all to describe guess. these things. Uh, you are 100% correct that as she dies, the effect wears off and she turns into a lizard creature. Uh, and you immediately recognize because they're standing right in front of you, the same type of lizard creature that these two are. Um, and by the way, all of you have some extremely casual knowledge, some more than others, of the lizard men that the Aarakocra are at war with. Uh, it's not these. These are different. Uh, these are humanoid velociraptors. <laughs> Uh, and the one thing you do note, uh, you can't, you, you weren't really sure until this happened, but both, uh, of, of the remaining scales slash skin of the mummies is albino. It's white, grayish white. Uh, and her scales are black, just coal black. Uh, you don't know what that means, but, uh, it is clearly a difference. Hmm. And, uh, she resumes that shape in her death and that uh, obviously will not bring it to zuana uh pseudoana uh that will bring it to Morezi. Morezi, there is a skeletal uh zombie kind of hopping around on one foot i want a gore a skeleton zoolociraptor zombie as we all do i have rolled a 15 uh, its AC is a 14, so that will hit. I want... I am going to attack that damn skeleton velociraptor mummy. That's the best combination of words. It so, does sound like D&D &D Scrabble. My, uh, <laughs> my character sheet says my attack roll is 1d8 plus 12. Is that so? 1d8 for, plus 12 for the dire boar? Yeah, is that how gore works? Uh, I guess I so. I should have. I probably should have looked at that a little closer. Uh, <laughs> we're, we'll we'll leave that for right now. For yeah, gore. gore. I just you... rolled nineteen points of ouchy damage. Nice. So please describe to me as you boom, 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 bam, slam into this uh, skeletal mummy 
uh, what it looks like when you destroy it. You know the, uh, in the hall of the Mountain King mu- uh, <laughs> uh, music? Like, the beat drop of that classical music is what happens when Morezzi's dire boar tusks ram into kind of like the midriff of this zombie mummy velociraptor, and all of his squishy bits just come flying out the back of him in a beautiful slow motion shot of a boar ramming th- ramming through a nasty, nasty zombie man. Yes, uh, and bowling does not exist in this world, but uh, nine pins do. And there, there is something of that, of just this, this skeleton just exploding out in every Con. direction as you just charge through it as your nearly 500-pound mass of boar just slam into it, and it just <laughs> goes out in every direction. And it is no more, and combat is over. Uh, real Insert quick. sound of bowling strike here. Exactly. <laughs> Boom. I think I think that very likely your DM will slip that in later. I just I just have this image now of of uh, I wish I could draw a duel myself with the boar smashing through the skeleton. Is this 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 viscera just flying all oh, over no, the place? I have to draw and, it. Oh, and then this and then this in my head. There's a rainbow. Just dripping with blood. <laughs> the sun just pours <laughs> like through they it, do. and the water pours down from the rain. It's just this oh, blood-drenched so rainbow. Blood rainbow. Yes. Oh, Y'all are I, weird. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad that hum- the human mind is capable of imagination. <laughs> says, says the Death Claw. Um, yeah. yeah uh, that was. That was quite a little combat round. That was fascinating. I, I'm quite. What I'm quite enjoying is how utterly deadly you all are as animals. <laughs> um, part part of this uh, was was for y'all to overcome uh, being transformed in animals, and y'all are like, no, 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 we're we're good. We're, we're good. actually really really good. <laughs> I'm actually better off right now. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, f- I feel like um, at the end of this, they're going to get the fet- the fetish and go, nah, we're good. Nah. <laughs> nah we're, we're fine. <laughs> We can stay like um, this. <laughs> I just need a little radioactive ooze so I can be more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle esque. Yeah. Uh, you just need to power up with some pizza. Uh, so, Osukai, real quick, uh, with you taking 18 points of damage, how many hit points do you currently have? Uh, 26. 26. Okay. So, you, I know you are quite uh, resilient, but that was a yes. really uh, tough hit that you took in, the, in that combat. So I to... would, uh, at the end of combat, uh, at the end of the shift, uh, normally when the shift ends, I recover one hit point per level. Uh, but since I actually am not able to stop shifting, um, mm-hmm. I don't get that anymore. So there's the downside. Yeah, and it's really starting to be a problem now. Uh, it's. I just want to let you know that that this is you. You've been trying to bear it, and perhaps your extreme reaction to Sudoana uh, was somewhat motivated by that that you're i mean this is just like you just feel awful now that your body is just constantly trying to shift and it's already shifted and so it can't but it's trying to shift and it it doesn't want to stay shifted it's just horrible uh and it's it's starting to get really really bad uh but i just wanted to let you know that and uh before y'all move forward is there anything anyone would like to do i just want to take a second to think about how cool that was that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna check to see if the mummies are holding anything, thing, especially like a token, perhaps. Uh, yeah, gotcha. Uh, you actually find nothing on them except one of them does have the same kind of knife that uh, Sudoana had. It, it, this thing mm. that appears to be a combination uh, skinning and boning knife, uh, but they have nothing else on them. Listen. Okay. So we've run into the outside guards of whatever we're heading towards. Mm-hmm. Very well, likely. We've got to keep moving. Yeah, uh, and y'all don't y'all don't need a perception check uh, to tell that that this is, uh, you know, ironically, obviously it's not great. You've all been turned into animals, but you actually feel fine. Uh, but you can all tell that that Oso guy's probably not doing so great, uh, and that you don't know how much longer he can take this. Pinton. 
uh, would you flap over and take the whip and drop it on him so he can understand us no matter how reluctantly? Um, if I can get it off the, the corpse, I'll do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. at this Be point, I might as well just take the whip anyway. It's got to be worth something. It's a yeah, whip sure. that allows you to understand animals. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? Uh, it seems like she was trying to control us with it, too, so maybe there's some element of that in there. That's a point, although at this point all I'm hearing is cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Squaw. Yeah, you, you find that you're, uh, you're between your beak and your claws, you're actually fairly dexterous, and you're able to undo the knot, even though it's it's rain-soaked, and you uh, flap over and drop it in front of uh, Osokai. And as soon as you touch it, you can suddenly understand uh, all the sounds they're making. Um, so I'm going okay. to go over and place my claws on Osokai and pray to Garl Glittergold that my <laughs> healing spell still works, since it is not a uh, component and it relies completely on my god's power, and pray to heal him. Uh, you can't quite imagine but it works okay. it actually works uh and and particularly because it only requires your faith and your prayer and uh, you know you do have to quote unquote move your hands in order to do it but you have claws okay and so everyone everyone imagine this <laughs> walks over you see the two claws come up in supplication and then one of them reaches forward or perhaps one of his tiny little his teeny tiny little manipulation um, you know, front front little pincers and just <laughs> touch uh, Osokai on the foot. And he and... is healed for a whole uh, nine points. Oh, so, you know, having uh, the amount and you, you feel that wound uh, especially close on your shoulder, Osokai, which was re very painful. And even though the... Um, uh, there are many different kinds of mummy rot, but you didn't want to have any of them. Uh, and so you were <laughs> no. really glad that you saved against that and whatever whatever minor effects of it were remaining are completely washed away by this cure spell. I've, I've got this image. So uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a realm in the plains where all the gods are and in one is just this resplendent room and sitting on a on a throne, uh, decent, not resplendent, but you know, mod modest throne, is Gar Glittergold just looking down on on the planet and, and you know giving giving supplication to his clerics all over the place, and then someone comes someone comes in and goes, "My lord, my lord, my lord, there's a crab." <laughs> Crab on line one. Crab on line one. <laughs> <laughs> and, Carl, and Carl just leans back and goes, What? <laughs> he likes well, the see, practical jokes. A crab, well, my lord. Now, now I'm imagining like an Air Bud situation where Garl <laughs> is looking at his rule book and he's like, Well, there's nothing in the rule book that says that a crab can't pray to me. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of crab church. Church. Yeah, uh, uh, you just imagine this this little blue crab with uh, with a little little backpack and a steel claw uh, casting a healing pit spell. Just enjoy that, everyone, for your ear holes. D and D, Arrow's everyone. Find Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> uh, what would y'all like to do now? Uh, we got to keep them moving. I'm going to start scouting ahead again. Okay. Uh, what you see very quickly as y'all all make your way, and you see it first. You saw before is there is just this. Whoom, drop off uh, several hundred feet ahead. Uh, and all of you, to some extent, have heard of these because they're famous. Uh, just almost like the Grand Canyon is famous. Uh, even if you don't know anything about it, you know that it exists. Uh, the Penta Plains are famous for these sudden, incredible drop-offs. And they are just hundreds of feet down. You do not want to fall down. Uh, going across them... There are a series of vines that have been stretched across. Uh, you would say it's probably um, close to 300 feet across. Uh, it's, it's not 
it's not a, it's, it's not the kind of thing you can jump over. Obviously, one of your party can easily fly over, um, but uh, that there are a series of vines that have been stretched across at different points uh, that make for like a makeshift bridge. Makes me wonder how the animals got across, since we don't apparently see our animals here. Gotcha. Well, mine mine got there pretty easily. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, that's true. A Phil A Phil would have. Uh, <laughs> You you don't know exactly how the animals got across uh, this. Uh, Aki would probably have been fine too with all the claws that she has. Mm -hmm. Um, Chop, on the other hand, not (laughs) sure. You're not quite sure how he would have done with a vine bridge. Mm. (laughs) Uh, There may have been some other way. It is it is raining very very hard, and uh, you don't have full visibility and. You're not, I mean, obviously y'all would have to scout for quite a while in either way to see if there were other passages. But, uh, yeah. Um, I just had a thought. Bear with me now. Um, I'm going to grab the whip, hold it in one hand, and I'm going to say in the loudest voice that I have, return to us. Okay. Uh, you in, hold out the, the whip that, in the hope that if our animals are within range, which they probably aren't, but I don't know, it's worth a try. Um, since it's supposed to grab hold of dumb animals, even though our animals aren't dumb, that perhaps at least one of our number will hear it and possibly return. That's the hope. Okay. Uh, so you call out and say that, and you pause, and nothing happens. So either it didn't work for whatever reason, or they are too far away. Right, so how do we get a 500-pound borer across all these vines? Well, With the power of song. I can't pick you up and carry you, that's for sure. Penton, can you uh, check to... Go up and scout around to our left and right and see if there are any other passages across. Well, yeah, I'll take a look. And I'll fly upwards and just, you know, kind of look in the either direction just to see how far the thing is across and whether that's viable or whether there's something else that might be better than these vines. Okay. Uh, you pump, pump, pump up, and it's it's a really good thing that you did because uh, it, it isn't, Super close, but it's also not super far. It's just because you do have amazing vision, but it, that is counteracted by the terrible rainstorm. Uh, that you do actually see a more standard bridge, uh, not in great condition, but a more standard bridge that's a little further on. Okay, so I'll swoop back down and say, "Follow me," and start flying in that direction. Okay, uh, and as y'all as y'all do make that way. Um, Perhaps, uh, uh, Morezi, as you're starting to turn, uh, your your new senses uh, smelling and sniffing everything, uh, you actually see, as you walk past some of the vines, some of them kind of whip and move quickly, as if they were waiting for you to step on. I think it's a huh. good idea that uh, our buddy there uh, did the, what he did. I think that that was a very smart move not to walk onto those killer vines. <laughs> yes, uh, it does appear that uh, that was a good call on your part. Uh, but it you completely, uh, you, you have solved my vine riddle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that was... Rest in that peace, was a, vine. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, best in peace, because my uh, I had some really good ones that were seven seconds long or six yeah. seconds long, whatever it was. Um, and you all make your way to this bridge, and as you get closer to the bridge, first of all, Moresi, you smell something. Uh, you smell the the scent of a predator, and um, something mm-hmm. alerts you immediately. Your your little piggy ears perk up, and you hear the sound of a. I don't like that. And uh, near the, the side of the bridge, as y'all look ahead, and especially you, Penton, as you're flying, uh, you can see some animals actually crossing the bridge. Uh, they are just very docilely uh, walking across the bridge going westward. 
Okay. And uh, as you as you see that uh, down below, uh, a creature begins running at the party. And it runs towards you and plants its feet at y'all and growls. And it is a wolf. What would y'all like to do? I'd like to wow. get into defensive position, kind of like make myself look tough, but not like I'm about to attack him. Okay. Uh, a wolf would be smart enough not to go for a dire boar, unless it's a dire wolf. A standard wolf knows it's not exactly something it's going to be able to take down. Um, that is very true. That said, there's also a crab and a kingfisher here. Hmm. Um, if only somebody could talk to it. I know, right? Um, <laughs> there's also a seven foot tall bear looking thing. Mm -hmm. The wolf probably doesn't want to go for that either. So we've got two dangerous things and one wolf. I think we're okay. If only somebody could talk to it. I mean, yeah, animals, we... you guys can understand each other. So go for it. And you can understand us and we can understand you. Because hey! you have a thing. You're the ranger, What's your deal? ranger. You're the animals, animals. <laughs> <laughs> Animals trumps ranger. Go for your lives. Um, and <laughs> y'all are having y'all are having this back and forth, and you see the uh, wolf, and he pauses in his growling, and he looks at you, Osokai, and he looks at you, you know, all all of you animals in turn, and he says, "Oh, I can hear you." Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello. Uh, Greetings. Hello! What's your name, Wolf? Oh, hello! I can hear you! Uh, and by the way, you notice that one side of his uh, head is heavily scarred. One of his ears is essentially missing. Uh, oh, and, Brady's death. And I, pick, he, but I he, pick up a stick and throw it. Fetch! Uh, he turns and he looks. He looks and he goes, "Why would you want me to get a stick? It is not food. I do not want a stick. I want food. I am hungry. My my people. They have been separated from me. Do you like crab? <laughs> I I love crab. Can I eat crab? No. We just wanted to know to see how much you'd hate it if we said we had a crab here." Yeah, I mean, if you can answer. take him, he's yours, but I don't think you can take him. He is a very big crab. So were you heading across the bridge? No. Well, yes, I am a heading across the uh, sticks on the, on the air. I am heading across because I am looking for my people. They have all left. I was with them, and then they all left. And I said to them, do not go. And I knew that I could not hear them, but they all left. And then I was alone, and then I followed them, and I came here, and then I saw you, and I said to myself, can I eat this crab? And then you said, maybe I could. Um, we're going to go with a no. No on the crab. Listen, Doug. Uh, <laughs> let's just work on getting across the bridge before somebody gets in trouble. Yeah, and we'll find you. You can find your friends. We got to find our friends. Everybody's looking for friends. Good, good. I would like to find my friends. Thank you. Yes. I would like to find my friends. Do you have any food? Uh, not at the moment. Osaka, oh, do you have anything uh, on you? <laughs> Osaka I... will take out a ration. It's not. It's not great. Oh, wait, wait. Did I have any meat? Uh, you did. You did kill that elk, but kind of things got a little crazy. So I don't think yeah. you still have that. Well, we chucked the elk and we chucked the elk yes, into, uh, the, into, plus the, it, into yes, the plus it's into the, the hut. It, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, there was only a shriveled husk left, so that that is not no longer with you. Uh, uh, I'll 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 take out a ration and go. It's not great, okay. but it, it'll it, it it might sate your appetite. And he he sniffs it and he goes, oh, "It is it is not great. It is not great, but I will eat it." And I thank you. And he <laughs> just devours it. And he goes, "Thank you. I was very hungry. My my people were hunting, and that is when suddenly the rains came, and suddenly the call." came to them and they all left they said that they must go and i said do not go but i knew that i could not hear them and so then they went and then there was a crab and i said could i eat it 
Squirrel. <laughs> hey, let's go across the air sticks. Let's do that. Let us go across the air sticks. And well, you guys go across the air sticks. <laughs> and he turns and, and he walks across the air sticks, uh, the bridge. Uh, and Morezzi, uh, go ahead and give mm-hmm. me a straight roll and add any dexterity bonus. Uh, I don't want to yeah. do rolling. The... I just want to talk about cool dogs. The uh, heaviest dexterity member. Dexterity bonus. Mm. That's an eight. That's an eight. Okay. Uh, As you're making your way across, uh, you weigh nearly 500 pounds, and this is a sturdy bridge, but it is also old, and it is completely rain-soaked, and uh, one of your paws (laughs) goes right through the wood, and uh, it is not great as you're starting to slide down through this hole. Uh, Would anyone like to do anything? That's physically bad. Uh, there's only one person who can do anything. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, unless, unless we want bacon, I can't do anything. Oof. Oof. I mean, can Osukai, like, pull me up? Uh, uh, yes, uh, you need to make a strength yes, roll. Yes, I can, but it's not going to be easy. You're approaching my weight limit. Well, she has not fallen through. She is starting to slide through. Yeah. With some, if, if if she can assist and push up at the same time, it, it would probably be a lot easier. Um, but I'm still going to need to roll pretty high to actually be able to pull her up. Um, all right. Strength check. That's actually really good. Thank you, Dice. That's an 18 plus 4, so it's 22. Okay, uh, so and I, I assume I assume you're helping as well, Marezzi. What do I roll? Uh, just strength uh, roll. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, so you you're you're kind of wet and scrambling. It's like ah, la, 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 la. you're starting to you see this yawning chasm below you, hundreds of feet down, and uh, that's when uh, Osukai just grabs you by the scruff of the neck uh, and by your boar thick, wiry boar hairs and just yoinks you back. Uh, and this is actually the first time, uh, Osokai, you... Uh, so, Lee, have you ever had what we uh, lovingly refer to as a Charlie horse? Mm. Yes. Ah, uh, it, it was one of the most unpleasant experiences of my life. Uh, so imagine uh, the area uh, near your bicep uh, when you pull her up, just spasms Mm -hmm. uh, horribly and uh, it is incredibly painful at this time it doesn't actually do any damage you do pull her out but you are momentarily incapacitated by the sheer pain that is happening Uh, and actually when you look at your arm that you can see through the leather armor uh, you can even see where the, the contractions were so great it has actually bruised you Mm-hmm. Uh, and you think this is this is really bad. This is not good, and it's going to get worse. I probably only have a couple of hours left mm-hmm. before I'm completely and utterly useless. Yes, yes, uh, it is getting really, really bad, and um, this is the first symptom of it. Is when you exerted yourself uh, to pull her up, uh, you had the first real spasm, other than just ow. Uh, but you all make your way across now, and you have uh, walked for a short way further. Uh, your new friend, uh, who identifies himself as Otho, uh, Otho the the wolf, uh, has has uh, told y'all the story of your meeting several times, <laughs> always ending with, and then there was a crab, and I asked if I could eat it. Um, and then there was. And then there was. Uh, and but he occasionally adds, and then there was food. It was not very good, but I did eat it. It was good to eat the food. And uh, you make your way forward, and you come to a slight lowering in the ground uh, that descends downwards, and you can see uh, everyone has seen some version uh, or picture, either present or past, of the Roman Colosseum. So I want you to imagine that is what you're seeing before you as the ground slowly slopes downwards. You can see amidst a great 
upshooting of water from the center. You can see the storm spreading outwards from this uh, Colosseum. You can see several mummy guards surrounding the area, and you can see hundreds and hundreds of animals slowly walking towards the center. And in the center, you hear a piercing cry of an animal in agony. And that's where we'll end Chafing Armor, number 65. Great job, everybody. Oof. For a second, Thanks. I was Good. worried that it was going to be Aki, but lizards don't have vocal cords, so it's not Aki. That's true. Uh, though there's no reason to think Aki isn't in terrible danger. Um, <laughs> true that. So, uh, so a, a big bear, uh, sorry, big boar to the rescue. Uh, but thanks for playing, everyone. Yes. Thanks thank for you. having us. It was pretty fun. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. For... Uh, as so often happens, I, I plan these out in a, in a two-part sort of thing, and they almost always end up being three, because uh, y'all do so many more interesting things than I'm expecting. <laughs> yeah. Story is more important than rules, right? Exactly. Mm. I, I, I that that moment of uh, grabbing uh, Sudoana and throwing her is a perfect example of that. It was far more important to go with the dramatic moment than than by the sheer rules. Uh, and so it helps that we're uh, is yes. currently experiencing something unpleasant. Some yes, I'm sure yes. Tix enjoys immensely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've just been I've been delighted at how effective you have all been as animals uh, whether it's Morezzi destroying the uh, skeleton or uh, the raking uh, blows of uh, the crane and also the scouting and of course the deadly attacks from the crab it's been fun yes uh, this is very very interesting we'll see how it all uh, comes together in the next episode so tune in everybody for episode 66 and yes. uh, uh, as as everyone uh, makes their best animal noises on the count of three, one, two, three. <laughs> animal noise. I don't know what these <laughs> animals are. Perhaps, mate. Thank you. And we will roll with you soon. Bye.